Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve uh, two-step absolute value equations. Now, just like in one-step absolute value equations, basically what we're going to do is we're going we're to so set up our equation so we, have, so we can take the absolute value, our solution can be positive or it can be the negative representation. Um, our solution. Because remember, absolute value of a number, like absolute value of negative 3 and absolute value of 3, both have the same solution. They're both 3. So therefore, when we're solving, if I say you know, the absolute value of x, we want to know what is going to be the negative x as well as what is the positive x. Okay? So we're gonna, there's two solutions that we're going to be looking for. Um, and obviously, we know when something equals a negative, which is not in this case, which I didn't choose these. OK, that was my next one. Um, I didn't choose one of these to have a negative. Uh, we would have no solution. Um, and some other problems we'll learn when only one of the solution works. But for now, let's just practice solving two steps. So again, the main important thing, though, is getting in your brain focused on setting up your two solutions. The positive solution, x plus 14 is equal to 7, as well as the negative solution, uh, which is going to be 3x plus 14 equals a negative 7. Then basically all we're going to be doing is using our inverse operations. So you could subtract negative 14 on both sides. By doing that, you get 3x is equal to a negative 7. Divide by 3. Why am I doing that negative 7? That's weird. Divide by negative 3. And you have x equals a positive 7 thirds. Over here, we subtract from 7. So we subtract a 14 on both sides. Therefore, I attain 3x is equal to a negative 21. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals negative 7. And again, as I mentioned later on, we're going to learn about having extraneous solutions. So it is always helpful to make sure you go ahead and check. Um, check your solution, make sure they work. And I do believe I made a mistake. I don't know why I'm dividing by negative 3 here. So therefore, I go ahead and check my answer, and I realize that that was wrong. That should be a negative 7 thirds. So now when you go and check it, that works. Plug that one in. Um, that one works as well. Perfect. OK. So again, same thing. I'm just going to do this over and over and over again. So basically, all you're doing is solving the same equation, except that right side is you're going to have one where it's positive, one where it's negative. So you, the, by setting up the two cases, basically what you do is you eliminate those absolute value signs. Those are not brackets. They're not parentheses. They represent the absolute value. So to get rid of them, the only way to get rid of them is when they're isolated is to set up, um, when that means they're by themselves on the same equation, which we'll go over later again in another video. You set them up. Then you just use your inverse operations. Here, you can see that my 6, that's being added to my y because that's a positive 6. So to undo that, I need to subtract a 6. Therefore, I have a negative 3y is equal to positive 15. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3 y equals negative 5. Here, I again subtract 6 again. You're doing basically the same thing over and over, except your answers are going to be a little bit different. OK, so technically, you should have a positive and negative. Let's go and double check them. I'm just going to kind of plug them in. Uh, positive 15, 21, that works. Negative 27 minus 6, that works. OK, good. Um, now again, we'll just go and do it positive and the negative. So 1 half w plus 4 equals 6. 1 half w plus 4 equals negative 6. Again, use your inverse operations. My w is being added by 4, so I'm going to subtract a 4 on both sides. Now to get rid of a fraction, if you remember, the best way to do it, instead of dividing by a fraction, which is perfectly fine, I like to just multiply by the reciprocal. That gives my w by itself. 2 times 2 over 1 is just going to be 4. So now over here, I'll subtract 4 on both sides. Remember, when you have a negative number minus 4, if you owe me $6 and you borrow 4 more dollars, you now owe me negative $21. So I have 1 half w equals negative 10. I like using color codes. So then, again, I'll multiply by 2 over 1. You could think of the 10 as 10 over 1. So negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. Over 1 is just negative 20. Those multiply to 1, so you're left with negative 20. Again, go back and chuck, pluck in your answer. Good. Perfect. OK. Last example here. Again, you can see I'm doing this over and over and over again. And there's really nothing wrong. There's not really, I mean, we're going to get into some problems that are more difficult. But you know, the process of this is remembering the set. To, how do you get rid of your absolute value? 
Make sure your absolute value is isolated, which all these problems are, then set up your two cases. 7d minus 10 equals 4, and 7d minus 10 equals negative 4. Then you go ahead and solve. Use your colors. So therefore, I have 7d equals 14. Divide by 7. Divide by 7, divide by 7. D is equal to 2. Here, I add a 10 to both sides. And what I obtain is 7d is equal to positive 6. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. D is equal to. D is equal to 6 sevenths. 6, 7, 6 minus 4 is negative 4. Good. So you're not oh, actually, I think I said you're going to look for a positive and negative. And that's usually common and true. But you can notice here, these are both negative. And you notice here, these are both positive. So that's not always the case. You don't always have to have a positive and a negative. Um, it is possible to have pos two positives. And I just want to make sure both of them work and both of them do work. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve uh, two-step absolute value equations. Thanks.